A couple of years ago, I did a writing residency at Portland Museum and we did a series of events, discussion cafes, which were really informal conversations and we invited people to come and talk about stone and amazingly some people came, some quarrymen who were young men pre-mechanisation, just before the Second World War, came forward and we started having these amazing, huge conversations about stone and their life on Portland. The quarrymen would know the main best stone, he'd know where that was from, from looking at it, and he'd also know the roach and all the different other layers as well. Yeah, they yeah. say the best whip bed come out of Broadcraft up here. Yeah, because the there weren't no, no hardly any shells in that, it was, was clean, it? clean as clean Very could clean, be. Yeah. very clean, whereas Whereas other places they had a they had a, sh a a shell in it, but they also had the, I don't know what sort of shellfish it was. Yeah. Well, even but in they the had like pale white clumps mm, yeah. in it, so yeah. you had this sort of pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Perryfield had white spots in it, didn't it? Yeah. Perryfield stone. Mm. Yeah. But Boy Linham, who used to be the marker, he could look at a bit of stone anywhere, and he could tell which quarry it came out mm. of. I wasn't quite that clever, but... No, no it was all no, slightly different, wasn't it? Mm. But uh, certainly made a difference, didn't it? Oh, yeah. They made us go down after another tier uh, for a while. How he can't. But it was too hard. Yeah. God, yeah. it was like glass mm. bottles. You couldn't believe it. Well, in, uh, in Wake Up Here, yeah. there was... Um, Terrible stuff. There was cockle shells. There was a tier, and it was 18 inches wide. And we used to have to cut off, and it would cut off all right. Right. And it's chucked in the bank all, all up through. Now, another day, perhaps when they uncover yes. it, you yes. know, it'll be yes, valuable. So it'll go out. <laughs> I, I was just really inspired by the voices of the quarrymen and everybody who came forward in those conversations. And I wrote a play, we got some funding, we got a team together, and everything started happening during lockdown quietly even though it should have happened uh, much before but uh, the professional team came together and now we've got the Portland players. It's impossible to rationalise these kind of timescales without a well-trained imagination. It's hard to really grasp what these massive numbers mean. And then when you you queue basically when that would be your queue for the third stop where you get into your groups. Okay. Does that make sense? So, so walking around with characters, you do a statue, mm -hmm. but you feel that together. So you can leave it longer, leave it shorter, see how it feels. And there we go. I've worked with actors of varying experience so I've worked with groups in that size but generally it's been um, from new graduates to ex as experienced um, but community plays like this is like the first bigger one like in terms of like completely new people that have not um, uh, done a professional play so it's going to be interesting <laughs> A friend of mine uh, sent me a message to tell me about it because she thought I'd be interested um, and gave me the contact details so I, uh, I sent off an email and uh, turned up to the next rehearsal. Have you done anything like this before? Um, I'm a member of the Royal Manor Theatre so I have performed with them before. How do you feel working with this group? Do you feel quite supportive? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's a lovely group and uh, you're eased into it quite gently. And all the trust games and the, and the warm-up games uh, help, I think, right at the beginning of every session. So that you're, you're in the right frame of mind and you're physically warmed up and mentally warmed up. It's 
sort of like letting go and being playful again. And I think people forget, like forget to, well, we all do as adults as we grow up, we forget to just be, have fun and play. And at the end of the day, we're doing a play. I work as a volunteer at Portland Museum and there was a poster there about it. And Jean, who's also in the group, and I thought it would be good fun to be part of the group. Um, but I was anticipating working backstage, as I'm quite experienced as a stage manager for local amateur groups. And I work as a volunteer backstage at the pavilion. So I was thinking that was what I would be doing. Only it doesn't seem to have quite worked out like that. I finished up being part of the acting group which is going to be a bit interesting, I think. When I was a little lad, my mother said to me, What you doing for a job, boy, a stone life it be? Ahoy, boy, come over, stone cries across the aisle. Ahoy, lad, be one of us, the stone awaits your life. I worked with someone called Dom Kippen, who's the producer, and a couple of years later, he rang me and said, I have this poet who's writing a play and she's looking for a producer for her Arts Council application. Can I put you in touch? And I said, absolutely. And so Sarah and I got in touch and it kind of went from there. It sounded like a great project. It was probably a good, almost two years ago, I think she contacted me, just before COVID. We were meant to originally do it last summer. Then when things started looking a bit more promising, obviously we had to cancel that. We moved it to this May, so May 2021, and that was all going ahead. And then just before we were about to start rehearsals, we had to shift everything. We just thought it's too risky getting groups together from the community. And so we thought September will be a safe bet. We can do all our workshops during the summer with minimal risk, and then hope, we hope by September things may have calmed down and we'd be able to have an audience. I thought, I'll have a little bit of a go, you know, just in the background. And, uh, uh, and I, got in touch with, so I got in touch with Sarah, the writer, and, I, uh, uh, and she said, well, yeah, come along. And so I came along. And so she said, in the interim, is a script, just join in. You don't have to do anything, just join in, just see how it looks. I was incredibly out of my comfort zone. So it frightened the life out of me, but I, but I gave it a try. And so here I am, out of my comfort zone, um, giving it a good old go. And, and I have to say that I'm enjoying it. It's taken a while, but really I'm enjoying it. So you feel really supported by this group and doing something new? They're fantastic. Their methodology is, is astonishing. They really make you feel comfortable and, and just lead you through it step by step. And that's what you need if you're an amateur. <laughs> early on to ask if we'd like to be part of the project and we love getting involved with anything that's going on on Portland so we said yes please we've always written songs so the background to Island Voices Choir is, is about original songs about Portland um, so that's why this was perfectly within our remit um, so I write I write quite a number of songs there are there are writers among the choir who sometimes bring some words and say, who'd like to turn this into a song? Oh, all the words came from the script. Um, Sarah gave us the script and said, see what you can do. So I looked through anything that looked, felt a bit like a song I started work on. So developed quite a number of the songs. Um, I worked with Lucy Treacher, who was the, um, the musical, uh, the main music person for, for the show. Um, and she, you know, I'd, I'd send her songs and say, what do you think? And she, she might come up with some suggestions and we played around with them. And then she, she did, she wrote two or three of the songs as well. <laughs> Oh, 
quarry men and fishers and wide mouth Chesil Beach. They're all changing shapes and remembering how it is. I think of my kin there, the men and the waves. Carry me back to those steep limestone breakers. For it's there. I am the accompanist, musical performer, not sure what for, for Heart of Stone. So it's, it's been an interesting rehearsal process, um, and I have done community theatre. For, you know, quite, quite a few times in Dorchester, we do a, we have a, a lot of community plays. We do one every six or seven years, but something so removed from from what I'm used to. Plays have usually had a, a storyline and about history of the town, all these things. Whereas this is more sort of piece of extended poetry, which is interesting. Again, never never done this this sort of thing before. Hey, 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 oh, hey. did a creative arts degree 30 years ago and I haven't done any drama at all for 30 years so I thought why not I thought it'd be a bit of fun after being indoors for so long yeah that's a bit longer what, what are you doing in this yeah uh, well when I came along I intended to have just one or two lines and maybe be a little bit part and then as weeks have gone on now I seem to be a marauding Viking, a coring crow, an old quarryman, a young quarryman, and even I'm Paul the Museum. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And out of all those, have you got a favourite? Definitely the raven. I came in wanting to be a marauding Viking, but I'm channeling, channeling my inner Viking, no, my inner raven. I love things with local ties. I love Portland, so I'm really enjoying this project. And it's why I wanted to be a part of it, because of its, its roots and its story and the fact that Sarah based it on all those interviews with Quarrymen. And I'm loving it, actually. It's really fun to co-create with people, I think. And the fact that they're all involved just makes it more fun. Because it's an R&D, it's been more challenging, I'd say, because there's so many characters and so many quick changes between characters. So I think it's been deciding how to make little changes and subtle things that will just give the audience a sense that they're a different person, but without spending too long putting on a whole new costume, so they don't have time for that. I heard it from my grandma's neighbour, um, Anne, who's also involved in the project, um, in the choir. Obviously growing up on Portland, I have a uh, big respect for the quarrymen and everything, and also all the stories that I've been told about the past on Portland from my family, etc. The second funding is from the Dorset Community Foundation Performing Arts Fund. And that really took the project somewhere else. It went from doing just the play to, okay, we can do some outreach, we can really get out there, which is what we always wanted anyway, to get into the community and share a little bit more of the activities as well. So we've been um, to some schools, we've been to the Atlantic Academy and to Westfield Arts College, and we're going to Portland and Weymouth Library, uh, and that's just been great. And that's enabled us to go into the schools, the libraries, and in some ways get an accidental kind of engagement of people that wouldn't normally engage with a project like this. Um, and that might be, we did some lovely stone painting activities just in the library, and people came across <laughs> us and then were like, oh, that sounds brilliant, we're going to come to the play. And um, I asked the director if there was something we could do craft-wise that could be in the show, and she's asked us to make some fabric poppies that will make a headdress. I thought it was a wreath, but it's actually going to go on top of Stella's head, I think. <laughs> he was one of those people who, if he'd been alive today, would have been 
yeah. a professor or something, you know. Yeah, he yeah. was a very clever man. He was a very, yeah. a very, yeah. very clever man. Yeah. Yeah. Could turn, I know he could turn his hand to things yeah. because I remember in the film he said, I mean, then I, he could already play piano, but he said, I think I'll concentrate on piano playing could, at the church and things like that. Just be able to turn your hand to something and do it. Yeah. <laughs> and it, the, Harry Seacombe used to do a program called Highway mm. and they came to Portland and he chatted to Skylark. So if you can find, if you, I don't know if they're still available there on Highway. Yeah, she was lovely. I knew Bob Woolley very well. Did you? <laughs> can you tell me about them? Yes. Um, well, he was a wonderful poet and he, um, I got to know him because I do painting and stuff. He sort of oh, oh, fell in love with my okay. paintings and got me to no, do more art. Paint, sort Thank of. You. Thank you. Pictures of his, um, oh, what he could just written yeah, of poetry. Well, he was pretty old then, Betty. And I was fairly new to the island, I suppose. But. I'm looking forward to getting into the Stadium Bowl because we've had this lovely space um, for our rehearsals. Um, but it's going to feel completely different when we move into the Stadium Bowl. I'm filled with hope. I think it's going to be a great show. We just need lots of audience now. That, that will make it really special and make all this hard work. As men are tied to land and field, all spiral down time layers peel. Boys grow to men, kinship in stone, in rocks we love gets in your bone. So many people for this project have given up their time to do it. I mean, you know, most of the cast and the choir are from the community and are doing this voluntarily. Um, they've given hours and hours of their time and we've had so much goodwill from sort of all our different partners on the island. Men of design, making our heart of stone to follow their line. It's been really fantastic to see everyone come together and be really enthusiastic about it and kind of go over and above. Like we had one week without rehearsals and the Portland players, they're enjoying it so much they decided to meet up on their own and practice their lines on the beach and, and that kind of enthusiasm and just like everyone just really wanting to make this an amazing performance is really quite special. It's the island we were, the island we love. Everyone was so desperate to come together and, and do something positive with performing arts and with, um, you know, the social element as well. Like some of the players have, you know, met or tentatively knew each other but have become really good friends and I think after Covid that sort of sense of togetherness to create something and be proud of it is is really lovely and and also one big thing I found because I'm a freelancer I work across different kind of organizations in different areas and one thing that's really shown in all of them is the need for communities to work together and suddenly you know like we've brought together the the prison and the port and you know the local theater and schools and uh, this project sort of draws everyone together and that feels really kind of apt for this post covid time oh when i was a little lad my mother said to me what you doing for a job boy i stole life it be Ahoy boy, come over, stone cries across the aisle. Ahoy lad, be one of us, the stone awaits your life. Ahoy ha, away then, we'll come to ride together. Ahoy ha, away boy, we're all part of this big story. The seventy in the workshops all singing out the ring. The chisels and hammers on limestone raise the shed a ding. Ahoy young man, come over, stone sings the aisle for you. Ahoy now, you're one of us, the stone talks to you. Ahoy, hop, away there, we'll cut and grind together. Ahoy, hop, away there, we're all part of this big story. Our life is good in service to learn the ways of stone. Carved depth and plenty of shadow, each man must craft his own. Ahoy, man, you're flying now, stone raises up your arm. Ahoy now, you're one of us, the stone takes up your heart.